Hello everyone and welcome back to another Callie's Corner video here on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie and today I want to share some lessons I've learned from publishing my first game, Math Minds Games South of the Sahara. First I want to mention that the route we took to developing and publishing Math Minds Games South of the Sahara is not typical by any means in the board game industry as a, a nonprofit with a mission and a certain audience and goal for this game is turned out to be a very different process from what normally happens in the industry right now but i think there's a lot that publishers and other developers and designers can can learn from different processes and there are some lessons that i learned as well that i'm going to take into my more traditionally crowdfunded game Moonshell, a mermaid game. First, broadly, I'll talk about the key elements that were very different about this game, and then I'll dive a little deeper into each one and some of the lessons I learned, some of the lessons I'm going to take into publishing my next game. So first of all, there are three games in one box, which is not typical at all. That's more typical coming from the education space using education materials in the classroom. Another unique thing is that the development and publishing of this game was completely donor funded, which is very atypical. Uh, typically board games in, in the industry today are crowdfunded or they're paid for by the publisher. And finally, a unique element is that we there are no rule books in these games. We actually created storybooks instead to teach the game. And finally, these are based on ancient strategy games, which we modernized and added a mathematical element to, which is definitely not a typical category or theme in the modern board game industry. I co-designed Math Minds Games South Sahara with my colleague Brandon Smith. We both work full-time for Mind Research Institute, a neuroscience and education nonprofit local here in Irvine, California. So a lot of what we did differently stems from coming from the education space, from being a nonprofit. Mind's mission is to ensure that all students are mathematically equipped to solve the world's biggest challenges. And part of that is our ST Math program, which is a digital program that we put into schools. Another part of that is just experimenting with different ways to create unique and more exploratory ways of experiencing math both inside and outside of the classroom. So I hope that background kind of explains kind of why we have gone about this process a little bit differently than typical board games and what we hope to get out of the game is a little bit different as well. So in back in mind history, some of the experimentation we did was with these big interactive math fairs. Like 5,000 people would come to this pop-up math fair and experience all these different exhibits. One exhibit that I was very involved with in was South of the Sahara, where when you go into the exhibit, it's kind of like you're transported back in time and to Africa with different dwellings, different replicas of ancient mathematical artifacts from the roots of math in Africa, as well as games. Families could sit down and play these different ancient games that were played from different areas south of the Sahara. From this unique kind of experiment, a big question emerged. How could we take this sort of experience and replicate it in a way that could be scalable for lots of families or lots of schools. And the first thing we went to was creating sort of a kit, uh, a family kit, a family math night kit, because we would go to different schools and that's where we do a lot of the testing of our games was after school, we'd invite families, feed them, have them play the games, and, and we'd observe and get a lot of great feedback that way. And there's a few things we learned from that. We wanted to get a lot of materials out there. A lot of these uh, schools, they don't get to have a lot of events like this. Usually they get 
one every semester where they get to invite the families to come together to, to do something math related. We really wanted to make that count and there's a lot of, of uh, families out there to serve. So we needed also a way to help facilitate these games because we're relying on teachers and volunteers to help teach these games. When we tried different rule books as well, get into the rule books side of it, families, especially if they hadn't played board games before, they were not comfortable or really uh, understanding how to read rules and they would always ask someone to help explain the game but that doesn't make it accessible and we couldn't always train up facilitators to help explain the game rules and go around and do that so we had to think of a different way to uh, sort of engage the families in that way and the answer to this was really the storybooks because while families were not familiar with rule books, they understand how stories work. Okay, it's a storybook, we're gonna take it out, we're gonna open it up and read it together. And then the story would also prompt them to act out different scenarios with the game pieces and game board and develop an understanding for how the rules played. Another benefit to using story was we could bring the historical and cultural connections through the story and show those connections uh, through that story rather than having to create an immersive experience like we did with the math fair. There's definitely positive and negatives to both of these things. Having the three games in one it worked really well for our donors for trying to get as many games out to schools and families as possible, but it did not really work for a retail setting and trying to get the games into individual families' hands. Uh, that's definitely something that I would have done differently going back through this, something that I learned and I would wanna just break up the games, even if it, it costs a little more than having it all in one box for the donors. And there's positive and negatives to working with donors to fund the games. If we didn't have our donors, I don't know if we, this game would have been possible, would have been published. And thanks to our donors, we've given away over 6,000 copies to families, many families from low socioeconomic situations, many families who have never played games together. And that's really satisfying, really goes toward our mission of helping families experience math through play. On the other side, there are other positives towards going through a crowdfunding avenue. You have, you're kind of building up an audience as you're crowdfunding. You get the attention of audiences who are already interested in crowdfunding games. And when they back your game, there's a certain level of sort of confidence in your game. It's like, okay, this seems like a really good game, really fun and enjoyable. Maybe there's some review support there and there's sort of a sense of community and that it's built up around the game. Another lesson I learned from publishing this game is when you're going to try something with the rule book, really give yourself that extra time in the playtesting phase because we actually spent more time play testing the stories and making sure those could teach the game than we did play testing the actual games. The games were uh, well-developed ancient games that we just had to tweak and modify and also modify adding that mathematical element to them. So that was fairly straightforward. Not a whole lot that we did super uniquely there, but the storybook definitely took a lot of extra time. I think it was well with, worth it in this situation because of our audience, families that have never played games before and trying to get them engaged and, and interested in playing games in a way that, that wouldn't seem like a barrier. I think a lot of times rules can be a barrier to growing the board game community and I love this chance to experiment with a different way of presenting the rules and engaging uh, players and families and learning the rules. And there's, I think there's a lot more to be done there. Just if you are gonna go that route, either I've seen some other 
uh, games do it where they had sort of a comic book story style to the rules but also a traditional rule book as well and as an additional reference I think that's a great way to go definitely just give yourself that extra time on the development side if you're gonna try something experimental with your rules one of the overarching themes here I think is to really know your audience and your goals for us the audience of families who hadn't played game before and the goals of engaging more families in math through play these kind of uh the route that we went having donor funded games being able to give away games to families who wouldn't otherwise uh think to engage in games really made sense for us and was a great learning experience a lot of these lessons I'm excited to apply to the next games in our Math Minds game series. We have a couple of games on the horizon. One of them is called Turtle Sums. It is a solo and cooperative puzzle style game, it includes a storybook as well. And another game is Crawl Animals, which is a early learning working memory game. So it's going to help develop working memory. Uh, it's really exciting to sort of apply what we've learned to these, develop better stories. We've become a lot better at developing those stories and creating some better, more engaging experience in the gameplay itself as well. My most immediate next project though is a different game separate from Mind Research Institute. It is Moonshell, a mermaid game. Moonshell will be published by Unfiltered Games and we're actually going to crowdfund this game. So I'm going to be able to experience a different way of publishing games, which I am super excited about. Uh, Moonshell is a strategy puzzle game for two to four players where you play as a mermaid, shifting, collecting, and arranging seashells of different colors and shapes to create awesome patterns and a beautiful collection. If you're curious and you want to follow my progress on Moonshell, go to moonshellgame.com and you can sign up for the newsletter or you can join our Facebook group where I'm sharing a lot about this process as well as our Instagram sharing a lot of photos as well as just some fun mermaid photos and board game photos as well. Thank you guys so much for listening to my story, to my sort of rant and revelations about going through this process of designing my first published game. It's always super exciting to see what you've poured a lot of your passion and energy into come to life, be published, be something you can touch and hold and, and share with other people and just seeing families playing the games experiencing math in a different way, experiencing board games for the first time sometime has been really rewarding and just another great element of loving where I work, loving what I do, hopefully sharing these videos as well, broadening our board game community, inviting lots of new people to join in the fun and just play some games with us. Well, thank you guys again for watching. This is Callie from Unfiltered Gamer. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and if you wanna share it out, I would greatly appreciate that as well. Hopefully you gained some insights into game design. You can apply on your own uh, side of designing or publishing games. And tell me about your project below. I'd love to hear about it. and and uh, hear what's going on, what you've learned so far as well from your uh, process of publishing games. Well, I will end it here. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.